from the from the uh, uh, arrangement, uh, we think it will be much better. Just to, uh, go to the second paper, Jason Lee. Uh, you have a forty-five minutes, and maybe just you know forty-five minutes, and we will stop at the at the at the, at the ten. Ten at the the Singapore time now here is not not here. On, the, on my on my central time for whoever at the Eastern time we will stop at the. Um, Justin, can you share? Can you see the screen? Yeah, and also that uh, let me just uh, you know just because the first paper was uh, you know the presenter was not there. Um, I wish that uh, whoever is in the room that uh, you can ask questions. Uh, that would be we we want to uh, uh, solicit more question, more discussions, so that uh, you know we have a full on type of. Uh, of, of the presentation. Otherwise, it's just really boring, to be honest. Okay, good. Justin, please. All right, so uh, thanks for having the paper on the program. So this is joint work with Hana and Jigo, who's also all, both, both of them are in the, in the sessions. And this paper is about an economic model of consensus. And especially we are going to look into a classic problem in computer science and distributed consensus called Byzantine general, a Byzantine fault tolerance problem. And we are going to uh, analyze Byzantine fault tolerance problems from an economics perspective. Right? So uh, the so-called Byzantine fault tolerance problem is a, a classic problem in, in computer science and especially in distributed computing. Uh, in recent years, uh, the, BFP, the BFP problem has been inspiring many new blockchain applications. Uh, for example, uh, Ethereum 2.0 and uh, Facebook's DM or Libra or Tendermint. And um, so this is a classic problem. And because of these new applications, uh, uh, there's a resurgence of interest uh, for, these, uh, for, these, for this classic problem. So in the traditional CS literature, when they deal with this Byzantine fault tolerance problem, which we'll give you more details later, uh, they assume that uh, the people uh, who participate in this, in this consensus can be trusted at least some of them can be trusted. Uh, however, when we apply these uh, BFP uh, problem to these more new blockchain applications, we'll be in an adversarial environment. So that puts a question about that we actually really need to analyze the incentives behind those uh, computer nodes who participate uh, in this distributed consensus. So uh, we spent a lot of time trying to learn about how uh, the distributed consensus actually work in the CS literature. And here is some very brief summary about how uh, we view this BF, the Byzantine fault tolerance problem from an, from an economist perspective. So typically in uh, the distributed, distributed consensus or the Byzantine fault tolerance problem, for lay in layman's term, it's basically just saying that we have a bunch of computer nodes who would like to communicate with each other and eventually lead to a agreement, right? So this is really non-rigorous and layman's term. So in the CS literature, they assume that those who participate in this, in this game are include nodes who are Byzantine and the Byzantine nodes effectively, they, just, they can just behave arbitrarily, right? So because they will, their behavior is unpredictable, unpredictable and it's arbitrary, so we think that the C, what the CS literature implicitly has been assuming is that those who are not Byzantine, those nodes who are not Byzantine, and also whoever is designing uh, the consensus protocol effectively would be concerned about whatever is the worst case scenario for them, which we'll make more precise uh, later. So this is that we see from the CS literature. And second is that, uh, because uh, this, it's distributed consensus, it's, it's, there's a very nature, uh, the very feature of decentralization ensures that each node only has local information. There, so there's no global knowledge about everybody, what everybody knows. So all the computer nodes, they have to make decisions uh, based on their local information. So this is another second important feature. And finally, we said that the CS literature assumed that there are some Byzantine nodes who can behave arbitrarily. 
And they also assume that those who are not Byzantine are so-called honest uh, nodes. So uh, the scientists who develop those BFT, BFT protocols, they would just stipulate uh, certain so-called honest strategies for those who are not Byzantine. So basically these uh, so-called uh, non-Byzantine nodes are just gonna be treated like machines without any incentive concerns. So there's no discussion about whether they are rational or not. But as in my previous slide has uh, hopefully clarified that when we apply those DFT protocols in an adversarial uh, environment, then we should really think about the incentives behind those non-Byzantine nodes. So with these in mind, in this paper, we would like to develop an economic framework that to incorporate all these above, above elements. Right? So in specifically, we would like to have a, a game among Byzantine nodes and nodes who are rational. And because these rational nodes would be concerned about the worst case scenarios, just like they think about what's the worst that can happen in terms of the, what Byzantine nodes can do. So we will use the, the concept in economics called ambiguity aversion uh, to model their preferences. So uh, ambiguity, we'll give more details about that, but simply put, that there's a term in economics called Nietzschean uncertainty. That simply means that uh, unlike someone who's facing some risky situations, right? For example, like a risky situation would be the case, for example, the, the, the rational nodes that the Byzantine nodes may do action, do one action with certain probability and do another with an, uh, some other probability. But in the case of Nietzschean uncertainty is that they only know what, what are the potentially possible actions that Byzantine nodes can take, but they have no idea about the probability distribution. Okay. So, and along with ambiguity aversion, that simply means that those rational nodes would, in situations, always think about what, the worst, what is the worst case that can happen in terms of what Byzantine nodes do. And finally, as we said that, because, uh, because of the very feature of decentralization, uh, all the nodes, especially those are rational nodes, they have to make decisions or inferences based on their local information. Right? So the goal of this paper is trying to build an economic framework to analyze the implications of all these, wide, of these widely used Byzantine fault tolerance uh, protocols, incorporating these uh, important elements from the CS literature. Uh, our goal is not trying to replicate the CS results, or is really trying to explore what these very features of Byzantine fault tolerance can tell, can inform us as economists. All right, so this high level discussion may seem a, bit, a little bit abstract to you. So now we are going to move on to a very specific model and hopefully we will make uh, these high level points more clear. So, we are going to define a so-called consensus game. And now I'm gonna give you step-by-step step what are the sequence of moves within this game. So first of all, uh, this consensus game is a game among N plus one computer nodes. So you can think about there's N plus one uh, players. Okay? And first the nature will move. So the nature will just randomly select one of these N plus one computer nodes as a so-called leader. And then we will denote all the other uh, computer nodes as so-called backups, right? So you can think about the game is composed of one leader and N backups, right? So the leader will move first. So the leader will decide on whether to send a message, which we denote M, to each backup node. So that this, so, so for example, in the classic Byzantine generals problem, uh, for those who are computer science who are familiar with the Byzantine generals problem, the message M would just be that the leader orders all the backup attack, uh, uh, attack the, the a, a capital, right? So, uh, so the leader can also choose to, they, they does not, uh, so by default, the leader may, you may, may just choose to broadcast the message M. That means just send the M to all other N nodes, all other N backups. But it does not have to. 
So the action space of the leader is to choose for each backup whether to send the message or not. Right. So this is the first step of I think, well, this is if you do not include the nature, uh, this is the first step of within this game. So once the leader has moved, will the backups will be now begin to move. So the backup will now have two, a backup after the leader has moved, the, the backup will face two situations. The first is that if the leader, or if the backup receives the message from the leader, then the backup, it can decide on whether to forward this message to all the other, all the other nodes, right? And uh, again, this, the action space for the backup is also that you can choose to forward the message to each other node, or you can choose to selectively uh, forward to some people. So, or you just choose, may choose to not to forward those messages at all, right? Uh, uh, there's also a situation in, in that if the backup does not receive the message from the leader, which we just would denote it as the, uh, the backup receiving an empty set from, uh, from the leader, then there is nothing to do for the backup. Right? So this is a, a, a simple case. So finally, once the backup has, all the backups has finished, uh, has done with their forward, uh, each node will then decide on whether to commit to this message, right? If they commit to this message, they basically contribute to uh, effective, you can, in layman's term, you can effectively think about it as committing to M is like they would view that the consensus on M will be successful, right? So again, the, when the, the commit, commitment decision has to be based on every node's local information set. And namely for a, for a particular backup, right? His local information set would be whether he, he receives the message from the leader in the second step, and also how many messages that he receives from other backups. Based on this information, and the node can choose uh, whether to commit to M or not. So uh, for computer scientists who are familiar with uh, uh, those uh, Byzantine fault tolerance protocols, and you can immediately see that where this is coming from. Right. So effectively, this is a protocol that has a, a, this a so-called leader-based protocol. There's a leader who sends an order to everybody and everybody, all the other backups will have one round of peer communication and then they will make decisions that on whether to commit to this M or not. Right. So uh, we consider this particular setup for synchronous, right? Because there's only one round of uh, synchronous peer communication. So, uh, in the classic paper uh, in the so-called Byzantine Generals, Byzantine Generals paper, which is the first paper that developed this concept of big bit uh, 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 Byzantine fault tolerance problem, right? In that paper, they will study uh, a multiple rounds of communication. And there's also this uh, later on a very celebrated result of the fault tolerance. They will consider two rounds of communication and with potentially multiple uh, sequential leaders. Right? So uh, we are abstracting from these details and we think it's much study a much simpler uh, protocol so that we will at least to kind of to explore what implications that we can, in economic implications we can get from a simpler, uh, uh, simpler, simpler framework. And hope, uh, maybe in future studies, we can add on to this so that we can see how our results might uh, just uh, extends to um, those protocols that are being used in practice. All right. So this slide hopefully clarifies the sequence of move of this game, but the description of the game is not complete without specifying what are the preferences of various nodes. So we said that uh, a important feature of this Byzantine fault tolerance problem is that some of those computer nodes are so-called uh, uh, Byzantine nodes and others in our definition are gonna be so-called rational nodes. Yeah. So we as among these N plus one computer nodes, we assume that F of them are Byzantine. So they may just take any arbitrary actions, right? And the arbitrary actions are basically like 
uh, if you are a Byzantine leader, you can choose whether to uh, you whether to send a message to others, or if you are a, a Byzantine backup, then you can choose that when, when you, whenever you receive the message, you can choose whether to forward the message or not. And also uh, in the commitment phase, right, you can choose whether you commit or not. Local information. So these actions, all these actions for a Byzantine node can be arbitrary. And there are also n plus one minus f that just like other than this f Byzantine nodes, all the other nodes will be defined as so-called rational nodes. And the preferences for these rational nodes will be given uh, given below, right? So the it would effect, effectively all of these rational nodes would try to uh, maximize their utilities that are given by uh, give this this matrix. So uh, first of all, the communication you, we almost can think about this communication as cheap talk. So because they do not directly affect uh, these rational nodes uh, payoff. So what really matters is whether they commit on uh, the message or not. So if a node does not, if a rational node does not commit M at all, so uh, it will just always get zero, right? No actions get you nothing. Right? If the, a rational node commits M, then uh, his payoff would depend on, would be dependent on whether the consensus on M succeeds or fails. So what do we mean by consensus succeed? Can we define consensus success in the case that if all if uh, consent if consensus on M succeeds, if all the rational nodes commit M, if all the rational commit, nodes commit M, then consensus on M succeeds, and then who, those who commit M will get a reward, which is called R. Right? And those uh, if the consensus fails, then uh, committing M would basically just lead to a cost. Or penalty of minus c, which is negative uh, to uh, the rational node. So the intuition for that is that for those who are, are uh, in a, for computer scientists, the intuition is that the consensus requires so-called agreement property, right? If you commit to something, but actually people will no, you commit to the message, which people will no longer will, will not really uh, agree to, right? That violates the uh, the agreement property in the CS. Uh, uh, jargon, then uh, you should just incur a penalty. And if you if, if you do contribute to the consensus, if the consensus succeeds, then you will get a reward. So, so the key assumption, right? So is that we if, if we look at this particular like to coordinate. Rational nodes would like to coordinate with other rational nodes. Right? So, in a sense that, so just per, just to be more specific, they prefer committing to M if they know that other rational nodes will also do, uh, commit to commit to M. Right? And if they know that other other rational nodes will not not all other rational nodes will commit to M, they will just prefer not committing M as well. The problem with this uh, with this argument is that we are dealing with a game with imperfect information. So this it reflects the fact that every node only have local information. Right? So uh, a, a backup would only know what messages that he has received, but he would not know what messages that other rational nodes would succeed uh, would, would receive, and also they they do not know perfectly what other uh, rational nodes would would do. Right. So they have to base on use their own local information to infer the information that other rationals have received and then infer what action they will take. Then they will decide on whether they will commit to M or not. Right. So in other words, any nodes will act upon this local information and set a local information set after all those communications, the two rounds, uh, the one round of communication. Right? So this is the description uh, of the game. Uh, so typically in a, typically in this, in those like a, uh, extensive form game, in this dynamic game, right? The, the standard solution concept would be so-called a perfect Bayesian equilibrium. 
So the perfect Bayesian equilibrium requires uh, is, is consists of a set of strategies and a set of beliefs so that the strategies would need to satisfy so-called sequential rationality. That means that at all information sets along the game, uh, those nodes or those players' strategies need to maximize their expected utility. And the, the beliefs, the, their beliefs need to be consistent, means that those beliefs need to follow Bayesian updating at all information sets. So this is the traditional, like standard, familiar way of uh, defining solution concepts for dynamic games. However, uh, what complicates things is that now we have Byzantine nodes uh, within this game. Right? And because the, all the, those rational nodes, they do not have a prior probability distribution about what, these, what the strategies of those uh, Byzantine nodes would be. Right? So, so uh, both of the, the concept of sequential rationality and the consistent beliefs uh, needs, to be, uh, needs to be challenged. So, uh, so the way we will need to do this, right, more specifically with respect to sequential rationality, so if you would like to maximize your expected utility, but if you do not know the probability distributions of the Byzantine nodes actions, how can you actually set expectation? And also uh, for consistent belief, traditionally uh, we do Bayesian updating, but if we do not know what the Byzantine, uh, Byzantine nodes, uh, the probability distribution of Byzantine nodes actions, then it's also difficult to do uh, Bayesian updating. So in order to address these questions, we again look into the economics literature. Econom economists have already actually have a lot of uh, powerful tools to help us uh, encounter uh, these problems. And this is the so-called multi-prior model, uh, the uh, ambiguity aversion literature. There is an extensive literature on this, like well, some of them, like for example, Gobia and Schmeidler and Epstein, Epstein and uh, Schneider. These are like uh, classic uh, references. These uh, multiplier models. So what does that exactly mean? So in general, okay, so a rational node with information I to maximize this particular object under this multiplier model. Okay? So now let's look deep, deeper into what does this exactly mean. So we can, first of all, let's forget about this term. If we forget about this term, then just this gives us this very classic uh, uh, so-called utility maximization, right? In a game, a, 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 a node, a player I would choose an action AI to maximize to, uh, to AI, choose an AI among all the that he can choose to maximize his expected utility. And, uh, and it, the maximization will be against what other, what other uh, in, uh, uh, nodes will do. And also will be the expectation will be conditional on whatever information that uh, a node I would have. Right? So this will be well-defined if uh, we don't have Byzantine action, Byzantine nodes. The fact that we have Byzantine nodes that complicate that makes those uh, calculating those expectations difficult. So the multiply basically assumes that if you don't know what are the distributions of the Byzantine node action uh, and which is induced by their uh, their unknown uh, preferences, for example, then you just then a rational node would just be cautious. And they will be so-called ambiguity averse. So they will be just very cautious, and they will think about what is the worst that can happen to them uh, among all the priors over Byzantine's actions. So effectively, is that uh, we have a set of p of the multiple priors of, for example, of Byzantine actions, and we will choose an and 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 uh, the node i will choose an action a i to maximize. Uh, the minimum of the uh, his expected utility, where the minimum is chosen, is calculated over all possible priors of of what Byzantine nodes can do. So we will use this 
And so we'll use this multiplier model to capture the preferences of these uh, Byzantine nodes, sorry, of, of the rational nodes. So with that, we will conclude the, uh, the model specification, right? We have explained what are the sequence of moves and we have explained uh, uh, what are the preferences for actual outcomes uh, for those rational nodes. And also we explain how do they calculate so-called expected utilities when they have um, they are nice and uncertain about what Byzantine nodes can do. All right, so for the rest of the talk, we will uh, mainly focus on presenting the main result uh, coming out of uh, uh, coming out of this model. Just so, be mindful of the time. Uh, what, uh, 15 minutes? Okay, good. So what we'd like to show is that uh, when F is larger, so like the number of Byzantine nodes is, well, the, uh, there are at least two Byzantine nodes and not all, and uh, at least two rational nodes. And then when the reward for consensus success is high enough, right? Uh, compared to the penalty for consensus failure, uh, then there exists a unique symmetric equilibrium. This equilibrium has very nice properties in that the irrational leader will broadcast the, uh, the message to, every, to everybody. And a rational backup who, uh, an irrational backup who received the message M will always truthfully forward the message to all other nodes. And finally, a rational backup uh, would commit to M if and only if it receives at least uh, N minus one messages or, or at receiving at least N minus F messages with one from the leader. So uh, by the way, there's always will be an exi uh, exist a babbling equilibrium, right? Because we said that communication is like a cheap talk. So we know that there's always gonna be a babbling equilibrium just in which just the nodes would just ignore the communication uh, stage at, uh, altogether, right? Regardless of what happens during the communication, regardless of what their uh, local information set is, they will always choose to not to commit to M, right? This is always uh, an, a babbling equilibrium. So uh, a babbling equilibrium, and then we show that, that when, under these conditions, there only exists a symmetric Nash equilibrium. So for those who are familiar with the Byzantine uh, fault tolerance protocols, you'll see that these uh, these behaviors, these strategies, actually somewhat corresponds to what computer scientists call as so-called honest strategies. Okay. And uh, so uh, we, we noticed that uh, the number n minus f appears a lot, uh, appears in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this result. So uh, just to kind of have a remark on what this number captures, the n minus f is the number of other rational nodes in a, in a rational node's i, right? So suppose that you are a rational node. So you know that there are, because they're in total, there are n plus one nodes. So you know that uh, there will be other n, n nodes. And because you're rational, so you know that there are gonna be another f um, Byzantine nodes. So you, that, you know that other than you, there will be n minus f, uh, So why this particular number is important is because regardless of what the strategies of those rational nodes, we know that the Byzantine nodes can always prevent them from receiving strictly more than N minus F, N minus F messages, right? This will happen when the Byzantine nodes just choose to never forward messages. So, and also if the leader is rational, then the nodes will, will receive at least n minus f messages, right? The reason is because in this equilibrium, the leader will broadcast m to everybody, so uh, so that there will be n at least n minus f backups will receive those messages, and also because the n minus backups they will forward the messages to each other. So we know that if the leader is rational, we can get this number. But if you uh, but if you require uh, anyone to receive more than this messages, this can always be prevented by uh, Byzantine uh, nodes, right? And this is important because we know that the uh, the rational nodes will be uh, max min over multiple priors. So they will 
consider the possibility of basic keynotes preventing uh, the MISF message ever to be delivered to others. So we'll show that these, these logics will show up, will be used extensively in our proof later. All right, so typically, typically in the talk that we, people don't really talk about proofs, but I think that it's quite useful for us to go through uh, the proof of this main result very briefly so that we can have a sense about how does this concept of Byzantine fault tolerance actually manifest itself in an economics problem. Uh, in, in doing so, we are going to define uh, two possible uh, action profiles uh, for Byzantine nodes. Right? So, uh, the, and these two action profiles will be extensively used later. And why do we single, uh, uh, when we single out these uh, action profiles, because we'll show that they have some pretty nice properties. And also because that rational nodes are, have multiple priors and they are ambiguity averse over, over multiple priors. So they need each situations into possibilities into consideration. So the first is what we denote as A1K. What does that mean? That A is action profile. And uh, one is that if you are a node that you receive, you are a backup node, you're a rational backup node, and you receive one message from the leader, and also, you in total you receive k messages, including the leaders and also other messages forwarded by by other nodes. Then you will need to consider the following possibility: that among the k messages that you receive. Uh, by the way, this this also is a case and that happens under a Byzantine leader, right? So you know that you get one message from one message from the Byzantine leader, and then. Among all the K messages that you have received, uh, the maximum prop a possibility of them comes from Byzantine nodes, right? So you say, say like you you say you receive uh, say seven uh, seven messages, and suppose that there are F is equal to three. Suppose that there are three Byzantine nodes. You assume that like out of the seven messages that you receive, at least three of them comes from the Byzantine Byzantine nodes, right? So. And, uh, and the rest of them will come, be coming from the, those rational nodes. So this is first part. So, and then the best rational, Byzantine backups, they, when they, whenever they receive M, they will not forward the message to anyone, any rational backups other than you. Right? So this is a so-called A1. And A0 is a case in which that you do not receive a message from the Byzantine leader. And then all the messages comes from uh, other uh, and the maximum possibility possible number of messages come from Byzantine backups, and so and also these Byzantine backups, while they may forward messages to you, they will not forward messages to other rational backups. So, why we single out these two action profiles uh, is because this is a case in which the Byzantine nodes, the Byzantine nodes try their best to give as many messages as possible to you while giving others fewer messages, okay, giving other rational nodes fewer messages. So we, it's, we can verify that if under the possibility, then other rational nodes will always re receive strictly fewer messages than you do. Right? So this will be very useful in our uh, later uh, proofs. Okay. So let's first prove that the, the proofs so called equilibrium existence. That simply just means that we would not would like to verify that this particular action profile indeed constitutes a, an equilibrium. So that just simply means that we just need to show that and pr prove that no one has incentive to deviate. First of all, a rational, if a leader is rational, then the leader knows that leader can basically just predict how the game is going to end up. And the leader knows that follow within this equilibrium, uh, he will get the maximum possible payoff that he can ever get, which is R. So the leader, the rational leader will have no incentive to deviate from the equilibrium strategy. And also, we show that, we can see that, that all the rational backups, as long as they receive the message from the leader, 
they were always truthfully forwarded as because uh, it, if they choose not to commit to M later, uh, they will always get zero. So it like just whatever they do will not affect their eventual payoff. But uh, if they eventually they decide to commit to M, then a deviation will weakly lower uh, his uh, his payoff. And irrational backup then receiving fewer than n minus f messages from other nodes, then that that node will just infer that first. Well, because if the right leader is rational, then you should receive at least n minus f message. So uh, it, 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 if you receive fewer than that, then you can infer that the leader is Byzantine. And then you can invoke the possibility of the two action profiles that we have just defined so that we know you, we, this, this rational backup I will know that other rational backups will receive strictly fewer than uh, the number of messages you have received. Right. So that means that uh, the irrational backup receiving these messages should not just should not commit uh, should not commit. Okay. And then a rational backup receiving an empty set from leader and receiving fewer than n minus one auto messages will infer that leader is Byzantine. And also again, we can invoke this possibility of this a zero k so that at least one other rational backup will receive empty set from the leader and fewer than k minus uh, q, fewer than n minus messages, right? So according to the equilibrium strategy, they also not commit because they will not also, they will not commit. Uh, it's also optimal for it to not commit as well because they, the, node, the nodes have this coordination uh, incl uh, inclination. Okay. So uh, the most important case, however, is the case a rational backup receiving at least n minus f messages from other nodes and including one from the leader. So then let's look at what is the inference that are that is going on within this node, right? The, the, the rational backup first, the rational backup will consider two possibilities. One possibility that the leader is rational right? and the leader is rational so then he would infer the posterior prob probability of the leader being rational. So by Bayes' rule, right, we can write the probability of, uh, the, of the leader being rational based on the information that uh, the rational backup I has. And we can see that this, uh, uh, this pro posterior probability will be higher than uh, the prior, right? Because the Byzantine nodes can effectively just uh, mimic uh, the Byzantine, the, 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 the rational nodes. So that's why that kind of, that, that's why the posterior will be higher than the, and my, uh, the, the prior. And equality holds if the Byzantine leader will just broadcast that, right? And the leader, in order, uh, when you get at least N minus F messages, it's also possible that the uh, leader is uh, Byzantine, okay? And so because the, the, probability, the posterior probability of the leader being rational is, is higher than the, the prior, so the posterior of it being Byzantine will be lower than, uh, than, the, than the prior. So that means that if it then, because that means that committing M when a rational backup is, uh, has this information set, will have at least the expected utility in, in, in expectation. That the case in which the leader is rational so that every, he can induce everybody to commit is, is high, is, 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 is higher than this number. And in this case, he can ensure uh, he, himself of getting uh, the, uh, the reward of R. And also that in the worst case scenario, when the leader is Byzantine, uh, the, uh, the uh, node I will get a penalty. So that's why that he will get this, this, uh, this value in expectation. While not committing M will always give zero. So then invoking the condition that we set forward that is as long as this reward for uh, committing is a reward for uh, committing while 
the uh, consensus succeeds is high enough, then it would be uh, better off for the node i to commit to to commit to m. And in this case, that means that he will not have the incentive to deviate. Okay. So this is a case in which we see that we are basically uh, combining expected utility with ambiguity version. So the node is, uh, he knows what, this, what, what, what is the probability of the leader is being rational or not. However, he's ambiguous. He's nice and uncertain about what the, 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 the Byzantine nodes will do. So that within this multiplier framework, we can actually uh, calculate the expected utility uh, of the uh, of the uh, of their irrational backup, and then finally, we can also very quickly in, uh, verify that uh, irrational backup receiving all messages except from the leader will also choose to uh, commit because because in this case. The, the rational backup will know that all the other nodes would already have received this message so that this rational, all, all the other rational nodes will truthfully communicate with the message with each other. So the conditions for others to communicate, to commit will be satisfied. So it is also better off for, for a node to, uh, to commit. Hi, right. Justin. What time, how yeah, much time? Like two minutes, two minutes. At least. Oh, really? And the most. At the most, at two most, the two minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's well, one minute. I to, I, okay, I, I was then I have to. So I, I'll skip this uh, uniqueness proof. So uh, we will actually we can show that the, the the because we said this is this is a sim, unique symmetric equilibrium. We can actually show that this equilibrium is also unique. All right. All right. So uh, skipping the so just you can take my word of the equilibrium uniqueness. Then we're now going to, going to look at the implications uh, from the, this main result. First of all, we see that there, that there is a presence of the bad one equilibrium, right? So, uh, so that means that those consensus protocols will always have multiple equilibrium. Uh, in other words, in the, in the blockchain terms, where there's always going to be forks, right? Even though the uh, traditional Byzantine fault tolerance problems. They talk about these so-called finality problem uh, properties, disagreement properties, consistency properties. Right? Some of some of the in interchanging uh, terms, but that's because they assume those all the uh, all the nodes will behave honestly. Once we allow those nodes to have incentives, they're always going to be forks. Right? So uh, so this is one implication. Um, second is that. Uh, the communication will facilitate coordination. So uh, we as we don't have time to talk about this, but if we can have a thought experiment in which that uh, the nodes have to make a commitment decision uh, right after they have received what the leader has sent them. So in other words, there is no one round of pure, commu pure communication as we have in the current model. Then we can see that the in, from path to path, the one round of communication will tend to uh, make the uh, coordination more likely uh, than under no communication. Okay. Finally, we see from our analysis that a leader is key for consensus. A, a Byzantine leader, if we know for sure that the leader is Byzantine, then the consensus can always fail because, uh, because the leader can, in, in, uh, because the leader, the Byzantine leader and other Byzantine backups can, in, can in, uh, induce uh, can in induce all possible uh, unfavorable action profiles. However, a non byzantine leader can ensure consent. And this is that how, how, we, how we did that in the proof because like if we, were, we once you have received a certain amount of messages, you have to make inferences about the lead probability of leader being rational versus the being, leader being, uh, being uh, a Byzantine. And you know that the, if you know for sure the leader is, is, is irrational, then consensus can be ensured. But if the leader is Byzantine, you know the leader is Byzantine for, Byzantine for sure, you know that the, the consensus will fail. So actually, ev eventually, whether you will commit or not depends on a weighted, weighted average between the case uh, in which the leader is Byzantine and the case in which the leader is rational. So that's, that, that's manifested in our proof. And also that it's somehow consistent with what CS people have been doing, right? So 
for example, uh, uh, in, in, for example, PBFT, they have the so-called view change. So the view change bay effective relies on the knowledge that if we do this game repeatedly at some future time, after an adequate, uh, adequate amount of time after the global stability time, so that the network is synchronous, then there will be a rational leader that can lead us to uh, good outcomes. Uh, so uh, how, do I still have time? Well, no. <laughs> no? All right, so just, I'll leave just, our- You know, one slide, or oh, oh, this slide, and it down. Okay, so I, I'll, I'll just, I'll stop here and I will leave this, this, uh, uh, this slide on, on screen just basically it kind of talks about uh, what we think are our contributions uh, from, from our study. Yeah. All right. I'm done, Jugo. Oh, thank you. Uh, any, any questions? All right. Uh, so if so there's no questions, we're going to have a short break. And according to the time that I, uh, we will come back at the 20, uh, 10, you know, whatever the time zone that you guys have, uh, 20. So now is 06, 20, so 15, 14 minutes break. Uh, then, then we, uh, then, uh, then from Harvard, we'll present the double spend counter attacks. Okay, see you soon.